Jack Whiten has officially signed with the South Sydney Rabbitohs. Four years worth $3.3 million, taking him to 2027. Kenty, what a huge signing for the Red mm. and Green. Yeah, massive signing. And obviously, uh, look, they're obviously a chance to win the comp this year, but they're going to be a bigger chance next year by the looks of things. But it's um, still a bit uh, of ink left in the story, though, Braith. So we'll see how it goes. What, what, what's, what's left in the story? Well, well, well the Raiders obviously kicked up. They've said to the NRL that they wanted this to be investigated. They, they deliberately lodged their, lodged their contract with the NRL uh, just over a week ago so the NRL would see that it was a real and genuine offer from them. Uh, there's a thing built into the salary cap called deemed valuations uh, where essentially what that is is they look at what your true market value is and if you're signing for within that range. Now, the fact that the Raiders were prepared to offer Jack White and Marquee money, uh, he's going to take a $300,000 pay cut next season to go to South Sydney. Uh, the Dolphins came with a very good offer as well. He's knocked that back mm. to, again, take less at South Sydney. Uh, and so $300,000 pay cut next year. It mm. goes up after that. And then he's, he will still be on less money his final year at South than he is this year at Canberra. Uh, aren't yeah, you Kenti, I think this deal for Jack, it's about more than money. And look, nobody would have rather see Jack remain loyal and stay in the national capital than any of us. To be a one club player, play 300 games, it would have been awesome. But he's clearly stipulated to South Sydney and to the Dolphins that it's about trying to win a premiership. That's the final box that he has left to tick as a player. And when you crunch the numbers and you strip it all back, He's only going to be forgoing a tick under $100,000 per season after tax and everything else gets taken out. So he's, a, he's got to full go 2000 cash in the hand every week. Which well, is significant, you... but who can begrudge well, him of that? Well, most people are falling off the chairs right now. Of course, but... $2,000 cash. That's his prerogative. Cash. That's his prerogative, after... though, Kenty. Who are we to tell him, look, who who is is to tell him how much he can earn? What's he earning earn? per, okay. earn per week? Well, I, look, he's, well, he's going to go from a million dollars down to 700000 next year, OK? And, so, and, look, he is allowed to go and, earn, and take a pay cut to go to another club, OK? He's allowed to do that. But it's also the last contract he'll probably ever sign. Mm. Most players, in fact, nearly every player, tries to maximise their last contract because, fair to say, Jack Whiten is probably not going to earn this kind of money in other areas of life after his career. Yep. So they try to maximise. The $300,000 he's on left next year, let's be honest. Like, I, I get where you guys are going with all this. But the fact is, the reason you've got to look at this and the reason the NRL's got to be serious about it because the salary cap's a joke. We know that. It's not policed properly. And the fact is, when a player goes to another club for much less than the current club he's on, there's got to be a smell about it. Now, it might be all rigid. It's back-ended, though. Well, that's, that's also illegal under, under, under the NRL rules. I wouldn't call it back end the deal, though, Hoops. It, well, it goes what's, what's up. What is the deal? So the deal's 700 next year, 750 the year after, 900 and 950. So deals go up like that anyway. Like I wouldn't call it a back end. It's not like he's going to earn one point three. Well, back end contracts are illegal. But that's not, I wouldn't call that. A, I would okay, not well, call that a back end deal. Just to that. Then. It's not a back end. It's not a back end deal. It's a pay increase. It's a pay deal. increase. We see players go up by 100k year on year. Um, if it was 1.3 in the final year and 700 in the first year, you could say it's back-ended and something needs to be done. But I don't think it's that well, significant. That, look, that's that's an intangible, isn't it? What, what's back-ended? What, what is it? Is it 100, 200? What's the figure? We it's don't know. It's going to be significant. Uh, well, it's significant. But what's significant? Of course. Well, it's it's exactly. up in the air. But I wouldn't so the call NRL, this one NRL salary cap auditors will look at it. They'll they need it. to look at it. And that's all I'm saying. They need to look at it. Because, as I've said... We've all, we all know the stories of different clubs where these sorts of things go on. And this is highly unusual. This is an unusual contract. He's taken a pay cut to leave the club. Now, I, I get the, 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 the bait that everyone's put down. Well, he wants to win a comp, OK? What's it's, an it's a lot, that is a lot of bait. You can't underestimate that too, Ken. But it's not a guarantee. I, I, it's, it, that's it, the point. It's not a guarantee. Well, that's it. But, How yeah. do you know the Raiders might not go better or the Dolphins might not well, go better the, than the Raiders South Texas? rebuild. We've discussed that at length. And like I said, look, everybody's got all the time in the world for the Canberra Raiders and what they're trying to do. And it is hard for them to accept as a club because they aren't one of the superpowers. Their premiership window has closed after those couple of seasons where they made the GF, they made the prelim, they're now in a rebuild. Look, I get, I get that. that that's hard to swallow and I get that it's hard to accept that your best player has decided to leave. Why did they put an option in his contract that allowed him to have a look around in the market every single year? Because they've had, they've done 
because of the, the trust they had in the player, the love they had for the player, and they wanted to help him, and they didn't believe he'd ever he'd ever go. The club's filthy is going. I understand they that, and I get filthy, well, I, I get their anger. Like I, if I was in their position, I would feel exactly and all, the and same. All way. the areas that helped him out in all parts of his life. Let's remember that. But he's not the first player that's that's left a club. He's not the first one club player. I get that's all that. I get all that. And if he somewhere was, else for a better okay, opportunity. Let me ask you this then: Why is, why shouldn't the NRL say, "Well, listen, we do see okay, the contract's valid. It's seven hundred thousand. There's nothing else there." But Jack, you're not a seven hundred thousand dollar year year player. You've just come off a million dollar a year contract. Why doesn't he go into the cap at South Sydney? Even though they're only going to play seven hundred. Do they factor in the fact that he's going to play left centre at South? That's that's pretty it good would money. Be market for, value for a only, it not, would be a market value for a centre, Kenty. Well, for a, for a, not an Australian centre. A decent centre, a good centre. He doesn't play he's red football. He, doesn't, he doesn't play red football anymore. He's just finished the World Cup playing for Australia. So what, what number would you he's put? He's just on, walked away from red football. What number, football, would, you on, what number would you put on him for an, as a centre? At the, as a centre, he's worth eight fifty nine. Which is what he's getting in the last two years of the deal. He's what about the first two? What happens if he plays 5-8 then? What happens if he plays 5-8 then? What? What happens if he plays 5-8 then? Because you can't guarantee look, where he's going to play. Sell, you can't look, guarantee look, where he's going to play. They're going to sell him as a centre. That's how they're going to get it through the cap. He's a centre. They put out their in their press release today confirming the signing, they put out him out as a utility player. Like, let's be honest. Like, we can see the way they're shaping it. And I'm not saying, look, it might all be rigid ditch. All I'm saying, it has to be looked well, at. Well, South's comfortable and confident with this deal. I, mean, you, you I guys think they are. Look, they, they are adamant. They've got nothing to hide. So Mark Ellison drove down to Canberra today. Jack officially signed the four-year contract. They've got it's something been, to hide, but don't well, tell anyone. Well, no, but they're saying that on the record, can't you? They're saying, come well, and have a look at the book. What are you expecting to say on the record? Well, what, what have you got then? If you've got evidence, if you've got proof... Oh, that that's something's not under, that way. Well, I've got no proof. I'm just saying... The, the, the evidence that you want the evidence of something smelly about this, he's taken a three hundred thousand dollar pay cut to go to another club. What about on the flip side, Kenty? What does it say about the Canberra Raiders? What is wrong at Canberra for a player like this to do that? Clearly, it's probably. You know what? I, I tell you what's wrong at Canberra that they offered him one one in the first place. Well, well they didn't offer him one one. It was a million dollars a year. Oh, well, million. Okay, so they offered him a million dollars. But in surely, the first surely place. Canberra. He's take not a, worth that on the cap. Instead of throwing stones, surely Canberra take a look and go, well, "What's happened here? Why have we lost this sort of player?" Uh, and that'll happen. I've got and no that doubt. Needs to happen. I'll, of course, I've got no doubt that'll happen. The writing but was on the wall. Jack the left the Jack left the leadership group. Not that long ago. I think he this deal was done Raiders a long time ago. I, I don't think group. it was done this week. I think this deal was done a long time ago. And I think Jack will be fighting in, in, in the boxing ring. And I think there'll be a bit of money coming to him that way. So you start to put things together, OK? Is this your prediction? Oh, that's, that's my <laughs> no, prediction. I'm just going to write down now. Well, the way he's playing, though, maybe Canberra have dodged a bullet. Because at the moment, he's not playing anywhere near like a million dollar oh, player. Well, you argue that too. But I, I'm just saying, I, I just don't get how you guys just sit there and just happy to see this contract just go through. Well, the NRL said they're going to There's go. There's a salary cap. cap the NRL salary purpose. cap audit. I don't think it's that He's going to review it. He's going to go well, over it. Jack will be holding. And, and you'll Jack will be saying it's all OK. Jack will. I'm not saying it's OK. I'm not saying it's OK. OK. I'm merely asking you. I'm merely asking you. If you've got proof it's not OK, where is it? I don't have proof. I've told you that. Right? How many times do you want me to tell you that? No, it's all good. But my my thing is this. He's taken a 300000 pay cut. Why do you not see something wrong in that? Why, why, why do you because think that I've that's heard okay? What he said to the his other... last ever contract. I've heard what his he's... last ever contract. Yep. I've, well, Paul, he's made a lot of money already oh, over the course of his on. career. Yeah, he's okay. been on a million dollars a year for the last three or dollar. four seasons. I understand that. But I've heard what Jack said to South Sydney and to the Dolphins. And I think that this decision is not all about money. I think it's about other things that he wants to achieve in his football. And I feel he thinks as though he'd gone as far as he could with the Canberra Raiders. He loves that club. But he wanted to change. I, well, I don't dispute that. But if that. you can't wrap your head around, like, yeah. well, more on the Canberra Raiders. Let's see what Ricky Stewart, their coach, had to say about the situation. He said the club did everything possible to keep Jack. As much as it hurts today, our future is still ahead of us. As a club, we believe the current contracting system is flawed. It's not fair. I know what the feeling was like to see an image of Jack in a South jersey on the back page of a Sydney paper. Yep, well, there it is. That's it. But uh, it's obviously Which strong. Which was a digital. It was digital. Yeah, yeah, it wasn't. Yeah, yeah. He, 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 he didn't put the jersey on. It's a, it's a tough one for Ricky to explain. Like you mentioned, like Mick, before, losing a you know 
a club great, really. I mean, he's been there for a long period of time now. He's been their best player for a long period of time. And they've, they've lost their marquee yeah. signing to the opposition. It's, it's a tough and, pill to swallow. And Ricky has every right to be filthy. For, for what they've done, I've got no issue with Canberra's reaction to this whatsoever. But um, Ricky's got on the front foot. He's got to explain the decision to his fans. That's what he has to do. How a guy that's their best player, that they put in the most amount of money, probably in Canberra's history, in, into an offer, why is he leaving? And it doesn't really sound clear. It's, I don't think he knows why. It's not just the money, too, because it's a relationship that he's, these two have had together. It's almost like father-son for a long period of time. We've spoken about it on this show so much. And Ricky's gone in the bat a lot for, for Jack over the years. How does this impact the rest of the year for Canberra? How do these two, you know, most influential player and the coach, how, how do they form a combination for the back end of the season? I think it's just business as usual. Look, Ricky's filthy, OK? Yeah. I know he's filthy. I spoke to him today. He didn't want to talk about it. He said, oh, yeah, he's not happy about it. He said, don't That's go. That's my point. And... We know what Ricky's like. He's very well, passionate. He would be filthy. And how do they How, how do they probably need filthy... to go for a beer, bro. They probably need to go for a beer, let it all out, thrash it all out. And if they can't solve it there, 